करुणाम करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृत पाशांगुष पुष्पाण चापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभावये भवानी नमस्ते सो टुडे वी हैव अ फ्यू शॉर्टर नेम्स टू गो थ्रू एंड देन दीज आर स्टिल पार्ट ऑफ द सेक्शन ऑन द गॉडेसेस ब्लेसिंग्स नाम 113 भावनागम्या She is to be realized through the mind. Internal or mental worship, known as meditation, is referred to here. If this interpretation is correct, then it gives the same meaning as that of Nama 870, Antar Mukha Samaradhya. Possibly this Nama refers to the Bhavana Upanishad. which describes her internal worship through kundalini meditation in the advanced stages of shri vidya worship all the external rituals such as navavarana puja shri chakra worship etc cease on their own leading the sadaka to internal worship through meditation internal exploration in terms of bhavana upanishad This Upanishad emphasizes the union of the knower, knowledge and the known. So we already discussed the point that the internal worship through meditation is superior to the external worship of rituals and regulative principles and so on. And why is that? Because when we internalize something it means we have made it our own. it's no longer something out there in the world it's in here <laughs> so when we say uh, to memorize something for example we say we learn it by heart and why is that because it becomes engraved on our memories permanently huh so we can recite without any reference to any external text Now the kundalini meditation is not a yogic style of meditation where the kundalini is raised by your will huh or by some exercise or breathing or something like that no that's still external when the kundalini is ready she will arise spontaneously and you see this is a very great confirmation of our observation that the higher stages of bhakti and meditation arise spontaneously as a result of clearing the blocks the grantis we made a video about that some time ago so if one does these methods uh devotedly over a long period of time the blocks will be cleared and when they're cleared kundalini will rise all by herself <laughs> she has plenty of intelligence and plenty of power she doesn't need any help <laughs> the only thing we can do is get out of her way she wants to unite with shiva in sahasrara that's her goal but at the same time she has to recognize the karma that's piled up in the form of blockages and these blockages are simply ego desire and attachments so this is my experience when the meditative trance is maintained for a long time and the attention is brought within external desires are let go then when everything is ready everything is peaceful and settled she will rise and she'll give you shakti pat direct from shakti and finally there's the union of the knower 
the known and the knowledge. What's that? That's an ontological triple. Huh? The subject, the object, and the relationship. So the knower is the subject, the known is the object, and the knowing is the relationship between them. All three have to exist for there to be an experience, for there to be a creation or something happening. So when we have these three, uh, when we discern these three, then it's time to realize that they are together one thing. Huh? This used to be our secret handshake when, when I had an ashram. <laughs> You know, it's like three fingers in one. So this process of yoga, uh, not the ego driven or yoga that's powered by will, but the bhakti driven devotion, which causes yoga automatically due to the attractiveness of the object of meditation. Now, there's nothing more attractive than the Universal Mother. <laughs> She's the most beautiful. To continue, there is another interpretation for this Nama. Meditation is of two types. One is meditating with the help of mantra, and another is meditating with the meaning of mantra. For example, one can meditate by reciting Panchadashi mantra mentally. The second type is to understand and meditate on the mantra's meaning. The latter is considered much more powerful. The Sri Vidya attaches a lot of importance to guru. Therefore, one has to go by his or her guru's instruction. But the transition from external rituals to internal worship, meditation, is very important, without which she can never be realized. This Nama says that she can be realized only through unstained awareness. Unstained awareness means consciousness that is not polluted by identification with the material objects such as the body and the mind, or desire, or uh, a wrong sense of our relationship with the goddess. Uh, there's really only one right view regarding the goddess, that she's our mother. And she is a perfect mother. And she can rescue us from the ongoing distractions, uh, the pains of material existence. She can take us out of this samsara. But to do that, we have to realize our oneness with her that the knower, the known, and the knowing, the meditator, the object of meditation, and the meditation itself become one. Next, Nama 114, Bhavaranya Kutarika. She axes the forest of samsara, transmigratory existence and suffering that arises because of indulgence in worldly activities like desire, attachment, love and affection, causing bondage. Sangsara is compared to a forest and the suffering of material existence is compared to a forest fire. A forest consists of many trees. If one wants to clean a forest to prevent forest fire, he must cut each and every tree in the forest. It is not just enough to cut the trees, he has to remove the roots too. Otherwise, trees will grow from the roots again. Unless every aspect of samsara is removed at the root level, desire, bondage, and attachment are bound to grow again, causing transmigration. There's a beautiful prayer. Sangsara dava nalalita loka Tranaya karunya ganaghanatvam Praptasya karunya karunatasa 
Bande Guru Sri Charanaravindam that this material world is like a forest and the suffering of samsara is like a forest fire. But the Guru and the mantra received by initiation from the Guru is like a rainstorm that pours water on the forest fire, extinguishing it. And I offer my humble obeisances to such a realized Guru, who is an ocean of auspicious qualities. It's a nice prayer. So, a forest, or even a single tree, is only half visible. The top of the tree is what is above ground, but the root system is below ground, and it's at least as big as the top of the tree. So simply cutting the top of the tree will not stop it from growing again. Uh, many plants are like this. So to really clean the trees, you have to dig up the roots. And of course, that's a very arduous job. It's much harder than simply chopping the top. Now, how do we do this? The Buddha also references this. He says the roots of desires have to be cleaned, have to be pulled up completely. Now, how do we do this? Well, we have to stop seeing ourselves as the body and senses. Because we're identified with the body and its senses, even if outwardly, through some effort of will, again, the yogic point of view, this still the roots remain and they will grow back. Huh? As soon as you reduce your effort of will, which is inevitable because we can't sustain an effort indefinitely, then again the roots will sprout and desires will come up. So the only way to uproot all these things is to change our identification. That instead of thinking, I am the body, I am these senses, I am all the objects and possessions and so on that are related to this body, to think, I am pure consciousness alone. This body is simply a tool. Huh? It's like a remote sensor. <laughs> way down in the density of material existence. And I am pure consciousness beyond all that. Although this consciousness is reflected or refracted by the various bodies, huh? the uh, five sheaths, panchakosha. And we also made video about that. Uh, this pure consciousness is reflected in different ways by the mind and body. But that does not change the actual nature of consciousness, which is completely non-material. And if you realize that, you're very close to complete self-realization. Nama 115. Bhadra Priya. But she does not act samsara for all. She does it only for those who address her as bhavani and for those who follow the bhavana upanishad. Those who mentally worship her in terms of bhavana upanishad alone address her as bhavani and reap the benefits. She likes the act of benefaction. She is keen to shower her blessings on her devotees. Devotees are those who try to attain her by any of the means discussed herein. The act of benediction is done by her sacred feet. So she likes to rescue us. She likes to relieve us from the suffering. She doesn't like to see us suffering, but we insist on it by being attached to this material world and clinging to the objects of desire. So what to do? Well, the Sri Vidya literature, and we have really introduced quite a few of those, especially the Sri Devi Bhagavatam, Sri Mad Devi Bhagavatam. 
is full of all kinds of methods of worship, and especially internal meditations on her form, her nature and qualities, and pastimes. So if one makes that a regular affair, huh, to study the scriptures of the Sri Vidya, and to worship her internally, based on her qualities and pastimes, to chant her names, her many, many names, in different mantra forms, then it's almost guaranteed that she will come and pull us out of this samsara. So this is the secret, huh? It's an open secret. The, but the problem is people don't do it. People don't take the advice. People don't perform the worship the way it's described in the scriptures. They try to make up their own. Or worse, they just imagine it and they neglect the actual performance of the, of the rituals. The performance of the external rituals is the first step. That's the karma yoga. And when it becomes internalized into an attitude of love toward the goddess, that's bhakti yoga. And then when that internal worship reaches fruition and she appears in the inner eye, that is the beginning of raja yoga or meditation. And that, of course, is the primary process for complete self-realization. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.